Hi, and welcome to chapter 22 of the UVM Primer code videos. My name is Ray Salemi, and I'm the author of the UVM Primer. Uh, we're going to look here at how to create agents. So an agent is a name that gets bandied about a lot in the UVM. And what an agent really is, it's a collection of classes uh, in a uh, basically a collection of UVM components that are all associated with a specific, um, a specific protocol or a specific bus or a specific part of the test bench. And the way they get used is agents allow us to create um, hierarchical test benches where we can mix and match pieces of the test benches without having interference. And in this chapter we're going to look at how to create an agent and also how to give an agent the information it needs uh, without entangling the upper levels of the test bench with the lower levels of the test bench so that if we change something down below it doesn't break what's going on up above and vice versa. Uh, what we see here a picture of an agent and this is our tiny ALU agent and we've taken all of the components that are uh, in our test bench so far and we've encapsulated them in this in this agent class. So this is a build phase that creates all these components and the tiny ALU agent has a command monitor, which we know about, a result monitor, which we've seen. It has a coverer, uh, which does our coverage and is connected to the command monitor, and the self-checker, the scoreboard, which is connected to the result monitor in the uh, command monitor. Uh, also, it has a tester, a FIFO, and a driver, and we can see that the driver, the result monitor, and the tiny LU BFM, they all uh, have access to the BFM, or the BFM has access to them. And what's going on here is we have a bit called is active. This is a, something inherited from the uh, agent UVM agent classes we'll see. And if that is set to UVM active, then we implement the tester, the command, FIFO, and the driver. Otherwise, we don't. And if we do, then we're going to drive stimulus from this agent. And if we don't, then we're only going to use the agent for, mod for monitoring and for self-checking. In our example, we've created sort of a contrived situation where we want to test the same, the tiny ALU two different ways. We want to test it with stimulus that comes from the agent uh, and also stimulus that comes from an external module. This is sort of a contrived situation, but it's, uh, it reflects something that happens in the real world where you'll take a test bench for a given block and then want to take part of that test bench and use it in a higher level test bench, but only as a scoreboard and you don't want to have to rewrite anything so that's what we're seeing here. Uh, this is system Verilog, this is our top level of our system Verilog and we're instantiating in this case two BFMs both a module BFM and a class BFM and the class the word class means that the uh, stimulus is being generated by the class by the tester and the word module means that the stimulus is being generated by the stim module down here. So in this case we don't want the agent to be generating stimulus. You can see we've instantiated two BFMs, two instances of the tiny ALU dot, and, um, and we down here take each of these BFMs and we put them into the config DB. So at this level we're just taking the BFM and putting it raw into the config DB so that uh, someone can pull it out down below. Uh, and then we run a test, and the test is always called dual test in this case, since this is just a single example that we're creating. So we're going to run this test called dual test. And we're going to look at this design from the top down. So the next thing we're going to take a look at here is dual test. Uh, now, dual test is a, is a UVM test. It, it looks like a UVM test in every other way. It has an environment that it's going to create. Um, specifically, though, what it does is, it pulls the BFMs out of the, the config DB and it creates an object of that's a class environment config. And this is an important thing that we're going to start doing. In, in previous cases, we've seen that lower level uh, classes will pull the uh, BFM from the top level, but that can create entanglement between the top level and the bottom level. For example, in this case, we have two different BFMs and which one should the lower level monitor or the lower level uh, driver use? We, we have to control that. We have to be able to, to say who gets which BFM. And, and we do that by creating config objects at each level of our hierarchy where it's important and passing the config object down to the next level. And that way we don't have to worry about what's going on down the lower levels. The lower levels will 
handle that. And meanwhile, they don't have to worry about what's going on up above as long as they get a usable config object. Uh, in this case, if we look at our environment config class, uh, you'll see this is not a UVM class, it's just a straight class. And it has two variables, uh, tiny ALU BFM, uh, of type tiny ALU BFM. Uh, the word virtual is the same, it means we have a pointer to the BFM. And we have a, a module class and a class, uh, a module BFM and a class BFM. And in our constructor, we take these classes in as arguments and we set them. So there's no way to make this object without giving it the classes that it needs. And that allows syntax errors to check our code for us. So we created a new version of this environment config object. And now in, we put that object into the config DB. So we pass it the type, which is config, environment config set. And we say that anything in the, uh, in the test bench that is from environment under H on down uh, is going to be able to find uh, something called config and it's going to receive this environment config object. And then we create our environment using the, the, the factory in this case and we know that the build phase is going to get called down in our environment. So let's look at our environment now. So our environment build phase is going to manage that, that, that config object. So here we have a build phase from the environment. <laughs> it wants to have a class BFM and a module BFM as well. And it also has a handle to environment config. The first thing it does is read its configuration object out of the, uh, the config DB. And then it creates a class config and a module config object. Uh, and these are of type, we'll go up top here, these are of type tiny ALU agent config. So we have these tiny ALU agent config objects and if we look at that, the tiny ALU agent config has a pointer to a BFM and it has a bit to say whether or not this is an active or a passive, I'm mean, not a bit, it has a variable to say whether or not this is an active or a passive uh, agent. And in our constructor we pass the BFM and the, the active or passive status and we uh, we uh, sort of and so we read them in and set them, and then we have a, a function here that says uh, is this active? Get is active. So we're gonna go back up here and we see we've read the environment config out. We are creating a new class config object. We pass it the BFM. Now this is the class BFM goes to the class config object and the module BFM goes to the module config object. So now each one's getting a different bus functional model. Uh, the class config is active. It's going to create uh, stimulus. The module config is passive. It's not going to create stimulus. Because remember, we have a module at the top level creating the stimulus for us. And now we store these in the UVM config DB. Now both of these instances of the, uh, of the agent are going to look for this tag config. They both want to find something called config, but they're going to get different things. And the way we implement that is we, we look at their instance name, and their instance names are tiny ALU agent H and module tiny ALU, class tiny ALU agent H and module tiny U agent H. You see those are the names that are down here. And what that says is, if you're in this level of the hierarchy, under class tiny ALU agent H, you're going to get this config object. If you're in module tiny ALU agent H, you're going to get this config object. So the uh, down below, they just know they're pulling a config object out. Here in the environment, we're controlling which agent gets which config. We look at the tiny ALU agent and look at his build phase. The first thing he does is he pulls out the, uh, the agent config and he gets the active variable from it. So we pull out the agent config. Notice we look for the word config. Um, we're relying on the fact that it's limited to our area of the hierarchy to give us the right one. We just call it tiny ALU agent config handle. And we pull out the is active um, variable. If it is active, and we say if get if this agent is active, uh, then we create a new FIFO, we create a tester, and we create a driver. And that's the only, and if it's not active, then we skip over this step. And we just and in both cases we create a, mo a command monitor, a result monitor, a coverage tool, a scoreboard, and we create um, analysis ports. 
that allow higher level uh, people to use uh, to look at the data that's going through this agent. Because if you remember from this picture, there are these analysis ports up here that allow other people to look into this agent. And in our connect phase, again, we check the is active. If it's active, we connect up the driver and the tester. Uh, and then we always connect up the monitors. And so when we run this, we see that we have two different test benches running in parallel. And there's no confusion between them as to which of these agents gets which BFM or the other BFM, because we've managed everything by using this, uh, this ability to go down and down the hierarchy and create lower and lower level config objects.